Welcome to the Irrelevant Podcast. I'm Nathan Jones, joined by my co-host, Alex Lewis, and this is Everything Irrelevant in the world around us. Thank you for joining us today. Today on the podcast, we have a special guest with us. We have Khalil Sharad. Khalil is a former D2 basketball player, an independent sports performance coach. He's also the creator of the Conjugate Seminar. Uh, what year is that in now, Khalil? Is that year two you were in now? Four. You're four. Four, four years mm-hmm. of the Conjugate Seminar running. We'll talk about that later. He's also the host of a, his own podcast, the, the Get Clean Podcast. He's the author of the Basketball Players Training Guide. And also, here with us today, he is still the heavyweight champion of the world, <laughs> Khalil Sharad. Ladies and gentlemen, Khalil, thank you for coming on. Awesome to be here. Khalil, what are you the world heavyweight champion of, my friend? I just thought of something, but it's R-rated, so never mind. <laughs> This is a, it's not a PG-13 podcast. Don't worry. You're fine. Smashing. <laughs> Careful. PG-13 and a half. That the first that? Day came out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smashing back honey buns like I just did, you know. Oh, my God. Keep it sweet. Keep it savory. Well, we, were talking about, we were talking about beer pong. I just made that. A second ago. Made <laughs> well, Khalil, uh, first of all, thanks for coming on. Um, First thing we kind of, I just wanted to ask you is you said you're, you know, you're a D2 basketball player. Okay. For mm. all, all of us unfortunate types like Alex and myself, um, what made you get, like, what, where did you start playing competitively to the level that you thought maybe I had a chance to play in collegiate, kind of like in a collegiate setting? Like, how did you get to the realization of like, yeah, I'm going to be pretty good at this? Um, probably, I want to probably say my ninth grade year. Funny thing is like my middle school. I never made my middle school team at all. Um, okay, I think it, I was one of the, <laughs> I was one of those kids where, because I, like I'm only 5'10 now. So middle school, I was probably like seventh and eighth grade. I was probably between like five, six to five, eight. And then I'm I, like, I was always like bigger at the guard position, but I was even skinnier because I was like a kid. So like in middle school, the best teams, they just try to get the biggest kids. And, like, you can miss – it's kind of like no offense to the WNBA, but you can kind of miss five layups in a row in middle school if you're tall because no one can jump and they're shorted. So, Uh-oh. Like, there he is. Uh-oh. He cut out on us. Alex, are you there still? Yeah, I'm still here. Uh-oh, Khalil. 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 Uh-oh. Mike, check. Uh-oh. Three gear. There he is. My, there we go. He's good. Yeah, there's some call started going through. I hanged it up, and it's still no, you're the voice of Siri you're good. shit. So, nice. ninth grade year, I make my JV team for basketball. And I think by the midpoint of that season, I started starting. Yeah. And and I could, and the, then it was like, so it was shorter than 10th grade year. I won the MVP of my JV team. We had the best record. I think we went 10 and one or 10 and two. And for the first time out of JV or varsity, we beat our rival school in the final game off a game winner from me. That's how we ended that. So then, and this was when I was in Florida and I started starting on the varsity team for the summer league. And that's when I was like, all right, I, I have some work to do, but I'm pretty good because I was starting over some juniors already that were going into their senior year. And I was getting good minutes, and I was doing pretty good. Um, and then I transferred, so we moved back to New York City the summer of my after my after my sophomore year, before junior year. And then, you know, they already had a team at the school, but I was six man at first, and then I started starting by midway through that season. I think we lost in the first or second round of the playoffs, and then that my senior year, I started. I was a captain. And I think we went the farthest in like 10 years of that school. And like, I basically like, like I remember my principal was like, basically you're responsible for bringing back up our athletics. That's what she said. You know, like, um, like, cause like the next year, all the kids that were underneath me junior year, they like, I think they went to the, either the same round or just below. But I was that kid that was constantly yelling at them in practice and stuff like respectful, but like I was more, uh, leading by example, but there was times where I was getting in people's faces. You know what I mean? Just a look. Like, I had teammates that were, could be a lot better and I knew that, but they were just kind of lazy and the problem was except for one kid out of the three grades below, 
only one of them besides me went on to play college. So a lot of them, it was like, I'm playing on the team to get girls. I'm playing on the team to get a credit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it's hard for me to get them to, you know, commit, you know, like it's hard for LeBron to get AD to commit and he's playing, playing for money. These kids don't even want to play in college. So hey, LeBron, like, hey oh, AD, geez. AD had that dog in him he's last night. Through. He looked good through. last he's night. 23 boards. The Lakers are back, up. baby. The if Lakers plays, are back. He doesn't even need 23, but if he, if he can average 25, 15, and three, yeah, we're going to chip. If he could just be and, AD, you mean he could just be like potential All Star AD? Him, be him, like if he just work, lives up to his talent. Yes, yeah, I'm not even asking him to go above that. But we need because clearly my boy LeBron, I don't know if it's more so the foot, but after he got came back after you know beating Kareem's record, my boy looks tired. <laughs> he like please, AD, help, AD, help. help. D'Angelo's look good too, though. D'Angelo's yeah. played pretty well. But, but D'Angelo's another one where he comes to go. Like, we have like six role players that are all really, really, really good role yeah. players. Yeah. But they all like pick a game, one to come, one to come. Did you but pick- I, I can get two. As long as I get two of them, I'm happy with you that. You take Lakers and six then? Is that what you're, you're predicting? Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Lakers, Lakers and six. six. Yeah. My buddy I, said I just uh, think- Warriors and six. So. I, I just think the, the Warriors. Um, I think they shot the best they'll shoot all series. Well, yeah, they, and they still ended lost. the game on a 14-0 run or whatever it was to get it even close. It wasn't a game and until I, the last two minutes. That, that was probably the most impressive part of the Lakers, that they kept them at bay. Because remember the last three possessions, I think AD blocked the shot, Vanderbilt blocked the shot. Like, they basically just didn't let them. And mm-hmm. they were forced them off the line and said, and then we're going to let AD clean it up. And then that's basically what they did. Yeah. Um, now, we'll see how it goes where the Warriors play the zone. Yeah. I'm sure that's what they're going to do, but I'm sure the Lakers know that. And hopefully they got some probably high, low action. Somebody flashed to the top of the key, pass it back down to AD and double down. Like I didn't like that AD had 25 in the first or 23 in the first half and only scored like 10 more points, but he, he only shot like four more times. Right. Man, I'll call that. Get 55 on that hit. <laughs> but they, 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 they literally have no one that can guard. Like no. if Looney goes out the game, he, he knows Draymond Green, even even Draymond Green at his prime would have a hard time getting 80 to go down to like 40-something percent. But when he's got Looney on him, it's like a 70%. Yeah, it's over. But they got to keep Looney because no one else can rebound. Yeah. If it, it, like I said, they were not going to be sacked, even as bad as Sacramento played, if Looney didn't play like Dennis Rodman. Yeah. They made him look like Dennis Rodman. Well, he did if the he first series. He was like... Points, he did the first series. He looked like Dennis yeah. Rodman in the first series with all the rebounds he was grabbing. But he, uh, he got, I think, 20 yesterday. Yeah, he still yeah. did good, but it's because they're making AD have to contest them jump shots in the wing, so he's still getting some. But then the Lakers, with the difference between the Lakers and Sack is that after he would get a rebound, he would kick it out. Somebody on the Lakers actually found that shooter. Sacramento would just stand there and watch and say, well, let's see if you make it. I'm like, what the hell y'all doing? It's a game go to St. Warriors. <laughs> <You know? laughs> two greatest, two greatest three-point shooters of all time, and you're not going to at least try to run them off the line. Yeah, Jordan Poole's bad, but I'm not going to leave that motherfucker open from three. He can clearly <laughs> he shot shoot. shot well last night. You know? yeah. yeah. Yeah, he did. And that's a, that's my thing. They shot. They had the first time in NBA history. Three players each made six threes. Jordan Poole had his best game out of the eight games he's played all season, and, and they, they still lost. lost. So I, I, and I like, the thing is that it's a do or die for Golden State the next game. Because yeah, you can't go winning. back to L.A. They're not winning two no. of the Lake. They'll go down 3-1. Can't go so, down 2-0 going back to L.A. If I'm the Lakers, I go all out in this in this next game because I know I'm now in their head. Because, yeah, they came back down from 0-2, but they went back for games 3 and 4 to their place. They're going back to L.A. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Hey, Alex can actually watch these games because they're West Coast times if you actually wanted to watch um, them. I have not slept. This That's another reason. <laughs> I finished my last treatment, bro, but the last two and a half weeks – it's been fucking stay up till fucking one and get up at five thirty for seven a.m. clients. Like, These times are terrible. I'm destroyed. It was like nine. It's no good. good. Yeah, the only games I've watched for Nuggets games. Oh, you're not that. Are you that just is, selling out with you know the Nuggets now? The rest of the world is the opposite. I watch hockey. Everything besides Nuggets. Nobody games. watches the Nuggets because they they're just boring to watch. I've been okay. watching. I watch, I've watched the first. I watched both the Suns games because I was like, that's going to be interesting. The Timberwolves, it's like, come on. But the Suns, I'm like, but now I'm not going to watch it because they've only confirmed what I thought. The Suns don't have any depth. They can't guard nobody because 
they got to score all the points between their starters. They can't even guard anybody because they're afraid of foul. It's easy work. And DeAndre Ayton. He ain't it. That bro is basic. He is basic. Jokic is going to keep torching his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and CP3, look, jumped up in the air, pulls his groin. Right on schedule. Right on schedule. It's always there goes the that playoffs. vegan diet. There goes yeah. that vegan diet. <laughs> Eat a little oh. meat, Chris. Come on now. Oh, uh, so, okay, so you played, then you, you finished out your high school career. You go to play, obviously, at this Division two. Um, I, first, I went D3, D3 at okay. St. Joseph's in Brooklyn, and then I transferred to D2 uh, at Villa Maria up in Buffalo. Did you try to play any kind of professional ball after that? Yeah, I played a little bit of semi-pro, so I played at uh, Jamestown, like Jamestown in upstate New York yeah. for the Jamestown Jackals for a little bit, and then... I played on two different like teams for like a few games in New Jersey. I can't remember what the hell they were called. <laughs> but then I but I originally moved down to Atlanta because I was gonna play on this team called the Georgia Kings. And then the season started in March of twenty twenty. And what happened then? COVID. Yeah, COVID. And then I always tell that story. Like I told my girl, I was like, woke up one morning, I was like, Yeah, I'm done. I don't wanna do this anymore. Yeah. I just I like during that pandemic, we were working out four to five days in the house. Like we bought dumbbells, bands, PVC pipes. All that stuff, and I would go to the outdoor courts because that was the only thing open, like once or twice a week. And I was just like, "Nah." I and I, I train, and I'm around people that play overseas and play semi-pro and stuff like that. Like the grind to do that, you can't cheat. So it's like I was just like, I'm not in love with this anymore. And I've always known I wanted to do this, what I do now, post basketball. So I was like, I could take five more years to get a G League contract and make thirty eight thousand a year and make less as a coach. Or I could just start doing what I also love and just be a coach. Yeah, so you, were, you, all the time. were you already really like well. working towards becoming the performance coach that you are now as your basketball career was progressing or what got you into that side of the things? Like like were <laughs> you already just trying to think, okay, this will be my future beyond basketball, or did it kind of happen during that pandemic session? Like when the pandemic hit, did it kind of take you to the next step or were you already working towards that anyway well it, it just it just uh officially made it where i wasn't tied between two both worlds or whatever it just made me kind of like evaluate stuff because you because that like i said the clearest indicator was i didn't stop looking i right. stopped having the desire to go and any serious baller would be you know doing leaning more to the opposite you know if they know anything they just keep looking but they'd be doing both and it just wasn't there and i was like yeah I, i'm not doing this anymore but uh what got me started originally just in the like knowing i wanted to do this at some point post both my parents were trainers when they were younger um and i had started doing coaching i did coaching some basketball and uh as just a regular trainer at crunch when i was 19. Okay. so after my freshman year of college i started doing that and then on the side, I had on and off, like in between, I would go to like, because I had switched schools, like in between that, I was doing training on the side. But I had started reading Louis books when I went to the D2 school um, because my buddy that put me on the powerlifting path, he talked about, he mentioned West Side, and he showed me like a few clips of them once. And I was like, why don't you do it? And he was like, yeah, it's too much uh, math to keep track of and stuff like that. <laughs> But then I like remember what he said. And I started getting into it. So I ordered the book of methods. Or I think my girl may have got me that for my birthday at some point. And this was before when I went to the T2 school and got me all the old tapes and stuff. So I just started testing out the stuff on myself. And I was like, I already noticed I was I was doing it wrong when I look back, like relatively. Um, but I had already started feeling better. And I was the only guy, despite all the dumb stuff they made us do in practice that were destroying everybody. I was the only one that made it through the season when I was having to miss in games, you know, and then that, that was that first like eye opening, like, Oh, this is really cool. And, um, and we had an athletic trainer that was typically, you know, like only knows how to tape ankles. Like we would do the workouts and bro, I would use like a quarter of the weight I would, because I was still lifting three days a week, even in season on my own. Like we had a 24 hour gym in our dorm and I would go and lift there or at the school gym when I had time. And I would like, we probably only had team lifts five to 10 times, including preseason. So like, it was easy for me. Like when they would do something, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, Ooh, that's, that's hard. I'm doing like 50 pounds in the chest person. Ah, <laughs> ah, struggling. You know, it's tough. <laughs> so 
So, and then I've always loved uh, coaching and making other people better. And I felt like I slowly, even while I was playing and, and when I was trying to do semi-pro and all that stuff, like I just kept finding myself, man, I really am diving more and more and doing more. Like I, I fucking always hated school. Like I still have a year and a half left on my degree because I hate sitting in a fucking classroom and I hate reading about shit that I either find pointless or I'm not going to use. And so like my degree's in business that, that I still got to finish. We'll see if I do. <laughs> and it's like, I'm like, yeah, this is good and all. But if you ask me to eat, read one of these damn books beside me right here, like super training and shit like that, it's like, that's a doctorate level book. Why can't I get through dumb Shakespeare? Because I find it useless. <laughs> you know what I mean? <sighs> and, and, and then the, the annoying part is what makes it even suckier is like, I know too many people that are really good at what we do. And if they have the degrees that, they say you need most of the great guys that we know. They're like, yeah, those degrees are pointless. Yeah. And the ones that think they're good, they're not freaking good strength coaches. Let me tell you that. If their advisor like, yeah, you, you need this damn degree. No, you don't. You know, like yeah. too many, too many, like the exercise science, it's like it's geared towards go to physical therapy school. So it's not geared towards learning actual performance and how the human body moves or training somebody to raise their squat benches. Yep. I mean, how many guys, we would get at my old place that I was working at. And it's like, we get them in the door. They got an exercise science degree and the motherfucker don't know what drop can't sets coach. are. They can't sets coach. Are. Yeah. Can't, can't, can't cue the lifts even in a basic fashion. Like the only interns we would get from schools that were graduating, about to graduate, that were decent were the ones that were powerlifting. If they didn't, they had no clue about training. And it's like, so you should be that much in debt. Spend four years. The degree says exercise science. You know nothing about exercise. And the science, as we know, is not up to date and is often wrong. So you're not even really, you're just learning the bones and muscles. Mm -hmm. Like, great, you can recite that, but you don't actually know <laughs> how they respond to training, et cetera, et cetera. So that's your, is that you know. your degree helping you, Alex? Does your degree help you do what you do now? Does my business degree help me do what <laughs> I do? Um, <laughs> let me think. Uh, no, I mean, Doesn't I guess I can help. draft a pretty good email. I was about to say, does it even does it even help you on the business side of things? That's the, I mean, uh, really, you know, like, yeah, it teaches you how to be like professional, whatever that may be. Yeah, come to find out, people just call you out on that, so then there's no like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah no. there's a there's more degrees that are just for getting your foot in the door than they actually are about preparing you for the jobs that you want. That's what I tell kids. Too many people, too many people I know with a basic business degree have a totally different job and it's like did you learn any of that in school they're like nah i just learned it on the fly at the job and most <laughs> of the jobs are like i don't know if it's a lot of jobs too they they maybe it's something where it's like oh we're not allowed to hire nobody if they don't have said degree you know like or this level of that degree you know what i mean like some jobs it's like you, you don't have a master's they don't let you get in that's just like, a, that's serious? just a company covering their ass the you know what i mean yeah. yeah so they're just covering their ass because they they if they can hire someone that's quote unquote qualified then they can cover themselves if something does go wrong. So yeah, I'm all about that YouTube University. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I get my Joe Rogan on. <laughs> <laughs> you probably well, laugh, bro. I listened to thousands of hours podcast. that I learned a lot. Yeah, if you sit down it's, and listen to fun. Joe, you're gonna learn a ton. You're gonna learn a ton compared to like sitting in a classroom, in my opinion. Because yeah. he has yeah. the best of the best people. Where those people are just like Louis, where they know how to cut the extra stuff. That you that they know you won't absorb anyway and may be useless. It's like, hey, hey let's get to the meat to potato. Yeah. We take too many, too many degrees. It's like, oh, this should be two years to maybe three years I should be spending, and definitely not three to four. And it's like, it's sad that it's like they gotta fill you with a bunch of classes so you spend more money and take more time then. Yeah. Plus, my favorite, it's like, oh, I'm an English major, but I gotta take two accounting classes still. It's like, is that to make me mess up and we have to redo this class or suffer longer yeah it's definitely about that because i'm gonna forget all this shit as soon as i leave here yeah i might like, show up more school, information you know, you're good at, you know into learning in the six months prepping for that west side certificate <laughs> than i did like in all of high school for sure but maybe <laughs> even all of college <laughs> like those 15 books in six months are no joke especially because right. like Super training is one of them, and they're like, it, it recommends which section of super training. Yeah, you just list all of them. Yeah, it's all. Of them. It was literally <laughs> like, except, it was like what? except a hundred pages, maybe. 
But even so, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to read the whole thing. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to be trying to go back and forth and shit. <laughs> oh, God. Super training. What a book to tackle. I still haven't tackled that book, nor am I going to ever try again, probably, to tackle it. But I do reference it quite a bit. I know when I go Just to talk... Learn how to use the index. That's all yeah. you need. That's exactly... Like, uh, I've been talking... I've had a few clients ask me questions about stuff recently, and like I know it's in Super Training, and I'm like, I'm not going to try to quote it, but I know... I'm like, I know how to use an index, so I'll go to the index, find it in there, and literally just show them like what I've highlighted in word for word, what's right there. But I'm like, this, this is why. I, I'm not going to try to explain it any further. This guy's explaining it better than I am, so here you go. Or they think you like made it up, or like it's like just some shit you've come up with on your own because like half the people, or more than half, right, in the industry will just make up shit that doesn't even. They're like, wait, what? Like, no, there's actual science to some of this. Yeah. The bands one with the combination methods, uh, people are always like, they'll see the bands in my gym and they'll look at them and they'll be like, why do you, like, what are the bands for? And I don't even try to explain it anymore. I just go to super training, grab the book. I literally they don't do anything, man. What are you talking about? Them. Yeah, they don't work. They, they don't work. Allegedly. Allegedly. That's what a lot of people say. Khalil, do they work? Have you used them with your people? Yeah. <laughs> I, I will think, say it, just depends, it depends on the population how much I use it. Yeah, agreed. I was like, let's say some that. context Same around this. What? When he's 10 years old versus when he's 20 and he's a pro, I'll use more bands when he's 20 than when he's 10. Because yeah. the 10 year old literally needs a lot of straight weight because they need to get extremely strong. The 20 year old, he's playing, he has injuries, he's already strong. Now we're just trying to usually get him more explosive. You know, so it's well, like, it depends. Let's, let's yeah. start from this. Like, what do you like to use the bands for, Khalil? Bands, uh, for most people, squats and deadlifts, chains, bench. Okay, but what are you achieving by using them, I guess, is a better question. Like, what type of stimulus or what is it you're gaining for the athlete or the individual? Some people, I use the bands almost as teaching tools, like the people that don't stabilize in the squat. That's one reason. Um, some people that slow down towards the top of the lift, I'll use the bands, especially for the squat. Sometimes the bench for the same reason, but only if they're experienced. Because, you know, some kids, it's like, if I throw bands on the bar, even a micro mini, it may go right into their throat because they're just, <laughs> yeah. don't take it out. <laughs> hey, they do. It'll be rough. I'll lay down, do it first. And go, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. I preface that so hard now. I'm like, <laughs> this is going to fly down if you don't hold it up when you take it out. So hold the damn thing because if it's not, it's coming for your throat and they're like that, they're like, oh, yeah, what a. Uh, Boom, and I'm like sick. There goes my and insurance then, liability form. Love it. Uh, <laughs> then the uh, overspeed eccentrics part. So sometimes the faster down, faster up on the squats. So some kids, kids try to lower it too slow, and then also they try to come off the box too slow. So that that helps quicken that process. So hopefully we take the bands away. Then with the straight weight when they're grinding, they're a little bit faster. So um, you've actually then, seen speed carry over from using the bands. Yeah. And then, um, especially in the deadlift off the bottom, that that's the, the deadlift. That's great because most people will struggle. Oh, God. okay. I, wanna, I don't know about most people, but just a lot of, especially the kids, they're not aggressive. The bands will make you have to be aggressive, otherwise it just doesn't get up. That um, lift, that lift, I feel it more than any other lift on the planet. When you put bands over a deadlift, when you're trying to do like a max effort variation, yeah. and it just absolutely tries to staple you to the you floor. Hold the ball harder. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you know, some kids that. I don't know why they do this crap. Like, even when my grip goes, it's like I pick the bar up or I don't. But some kids, like, holding the bar, and they're just pussyfooting around. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? But them bands, if you ain't holding that thing, they'll fly right it's back It's gone, up. yeah. <laughs> that thing, that lift will eat your soul if, you let, if you're let if you if you not ready for that lift. I don't know, though. Neither, bottom, what do you like to use bands for? What do I like to what use is, them for? Yeah. Why, do, why do you use bands? I don't get to use them very often. I only get to use them with myself right now. <laughs> I did have a few athletes that got to the level of strength where we could use them. Um, I see a lot of kids that come in that are lacking that explosiveness, like kind of like what Khalil was talking about. They they can be pretty strong. Um, they're pretty good at using maximal weights. And I like to kind of use the method that Louis used with more band tension, less weight to teach them how to be more mm. explosive. And so I overload the bars with those kids that literally can't jump or they can't they just have no explosiveness at all. Like their their explosiveness is gone. I like to use the more band tension, less bar weight to get them to try to 
keep exploding all the way through the bar, but I rarely have athletes walking through my door that are ready for that kind of method, to be really honest. I'm still trying to get them to the levels of strength where chains and bands and things like that are even uh, can be effectively used. Because it's like Khalil said, it's like he's got people that are 20 that are already at a level of strength where that stuff can be utilized. I still have to build. I'm still working with a lot of people that are just utilizing, trying to get a good base level of strength before that stuff even comes into play. So I think that's where well, I was saying that as an example. No, me. most I have more. No, I have I train more kids than I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, or yeah. or more people that fit into their really weak. So yeah, I was so, just saying. I would say, remember if I if I have the same kid at ten and twenty. Yeah, yeah. Their band usage is very different. You know, that's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't have that many kids. Like I said, I have more people that squat three hundred below for men and and. 185 and below for girls well i think that's what alex was about to mention it's like what level of strength thresholds do they even need to accomplish before that stuff even matters is that what you were going to say yeah so like what is what is the threshold that you you said you don't have anyone that can use them so what is the threshold you have to get to to be able to use them well you and i have talked about this and the book talks about this if you read any of the literature it's like he starts at a 400 pound squat so I so haven't got to anybody. I've got one kid that's got a four max pounds. effort variations. There's no value in using bands. Is it only because that's for the speed no. portion? I think you right? can use bands for max effort variations, sure. But I don't. I don't really know what the threshold is to use those. Is there a threshold? I mean, I, I've used I've used bands with kids that that like have those numbers that I say. It's just that I don't use it as much. Like I'll, I'll go through like. Okay, let's perfect example. I have a, had a kid. He squatted three oh eight. He was like one forty something. High school kid. We would do in season. Out of those, what is it? November to February. In those four months, probably two to three out of those four months, it was mostly speed squats. So we were using bands or chains. And then before season and off season, it was mostly straight weight or even a future method. So it was, or uh, Anderson squat. So oh, it was a lot more overload. And if it was a regular squat, it was straight, mostly straight weight or straight weight with some chain. So a lot more brief maximal tension like that. If it was in season, try to try to say, well, we're trying to maintain your strength, right? So the maxes are very like every so often, they're no less than three reps. And then the other squat day, um, it's a lot of shorter range of motion and a lot more lightweight fast high sets high reps you know so it was really time of the year and what the kid needs more than i know how good bands are so i'm just gonna have everybody do it you know like like yeah. but now i know bird bird gets great results but i don't know if it's more you know like because of this or because of so many of the other things you do but he has kids that their percentages equal the bar and a chain and no weight on top of that and he said he starts kids with bands and chains like from the jump, you know. So, but I don't know if that's because he's also manipulating so much other stuff so well. You, that that goes with every guy, which is why you can't say I'll just copy this coach because it's like, well, based on the population they have, it could be time. Like I know Bitney, when I talk to him, he's like, I only don't use bands because I don't want it to be uneven, and because kids always forget to set it up. It's very easy for them to throw on chains and take them off. You know, same thing. He's like, I don't use reverse hybrids. I only have two, and I train thirty kids at the same time. There will be a line out the door if I try to use and use reverse hybrids. So he's like, I don't use it, but he knows it works. You know what I mean? So it's like, so much of it is like, kind of learn from so many of them, and hopefully, you know all the situations why they train this person maybe differently than they normally would, and then when you ha- have that same type of kid or scenario, you can apply that to them. You know what I mean? Like, like I have people that tell me like, Hey, try this twelve week wave. And I literally will title it after that coach that told me about that 12-week wave. And then I'll try it out. And I'll say, okay, this, I think, works for this, this, that. And then I have that program ready for when it actually, like, correlates with this this type of athlete. You know what I mean? Because so much of this shit is, like, it'll work great, but it won't work great for everybody, right? So, you know, you got to have that. This is for this person and this is for that person. You mean having personalized coaching? Yeah. Makes yeah. a difference. About that. <laughs> Unlike most people advertise actually individualization. Shameless <laughs> plug here. There's three people that do personalized coaching. <laughs> We're the only three, actually. Sorry about it. If you want to come get your personalized coaching. Gotta break the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
just looking at you on the other end of the screen. Oh, God. So why, okay, Alex, why would you use bands on a maximal effort list? I don't use them at all. I don't know what you're talking about. Shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> I distinctly remember a 12-week wave that I went through where it was just bands on what everything. What do right? I like to use bands for? Was it a 12-week wave? It was not 12 weeks. It was like six. It was like Where you nine, found all the different actually. maxes? That was pretty fun, wasn't it? Oh, it was a blast. Loved it. Until I, I got ran into the maxes? ground. Yeah. Well, I mean, so think about this. Accommodating resistance in a maximal effort case is going to be easier on the more vulnerable joints in the shittier spots so that's nice yep okay if you use something like the future method you can like build your own confidence up with handling bigger weight because you're seeing it happen and your brain doesn't really know that the bands are doing it okay like you is but you don't think about it while you're doing it um what else just to fuck around <laughs> see what which, works I'm, I'm benching yesterday right and i'm doing warming up and I'm doing 90 and 95%. And this fucking random guy just like loads the other side of the bar while I'm warming up. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to ignore it. I'm not going to do anything, whatever. So I do my set. And then like when I go to the other side to load it again, the fucking asshole didn't even put a clip on. And then <laughs> so I'm like this fucking, this is ridiculous. Then I do my sets and on my back down work, I'm doing speed work. So I set up the red bands, right, in the nice little triangle. And as I go to load it, the same jackass is like, hey, can I try this out in between your rest sets? I'm like, who the fuck are you? I don't even know who you are. Like, why are you asking to work in when I don't, like, who? What? No, leave me alone. I was like, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand people. You look like, friendly. Yeah, I'm sure I look real friendly. I'm over here. <laughs> Prep for a meet, right? Like I've never been on a fucking platform, so I'm sitting here trying to like visualize some things, check some shit out, and I got fucking I don't know, people getting offended because I don't want to talk to them. I'm like, leave me the fuck alone. How about that? Like hey, he's just I couldn't believe it. I was I was really confused. And like when I work buddy. out, it's not good, right? Like it's that you have to go in and flip that switch. That reminded me. You were about so, to yeah, flip that's... a switch, all right. About to kill that guy for touching your barbell. I wasn't, but it's not even that. It's just like, get the fuck out of my bubble. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you lay claim to a bench. Well, you don't know, Nathan. You have your own gym. You can just tell everyone to fuck off. Well, I mean, but, yeah. I would like to have a trading partner every now and then. That'd be kind of cool. I'd like I'm to sure everyone has gone right to now. the gym and tried to lay claim to some piece of equipment or a bench or something, and some jackass with their head up their ass is just taking it, and you're like, motherfucker, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Dude, my <laughs> remote clients tell me that all the time. They're like, I can't get anything done in these stinking commercial gyms because, like, you have to just, like, lay claim and I put a stake and then, like, yeah, you do. claim yeah, it. I don't miss that. <laughs> grab it and hold on for dear life. Right. Going, I'm going in a private the... gym. I'm not in a Globo gym. So when I'm on the fucking combo rack, don't fucking load my bar for me and at least not to put a clip on. Jesus fuck. Like, what if I didn't know what the fuck I was doing and I racked 225 and I go to do it and it just fucking <laughs> goes cattywampus and like, then what? <sighs> fucking people. Trouble. I guess I have a like a real sore spot for it because when I dislocated my shoulder the first time, random dude at the gym was my spot and that's partial, part of the reason why it happened. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? God. So on military press, don't ever spot at the wrists or at, not at the elbows. It's always at the wrist. Yeah, thousand percent. I was like, that oh, was he a did, fun wait, he did it learn. on a he did it on like a dumbbell. He was doing with, you were doing with dumbbells, not a yeah, barbell. Ninety pound dumbbells, right? Yeah. And press up. This one went. This one went backwards. Oh god. Ooh. <laughs> Why do people think elbows is the way to spot that? Like, what in your rational mind would think like I can push your elbows up when you do this? I've, I have no fucking idea. I've never thought, I've never understood that. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm going to grab like, their freaking wrist. Grab this thing here, right? Yeah. And you help them or you push it forward so that they, I don't know. Well, I tell them that too. I'm like, it's easier to spot. So if they're going <clears throat> crazy or you, something happens, you can just push the weight away or you can just like get them, just get them away from the weight. Or just yeah, do you guys pull. like have to teach your kids how to spot properly? Is that uh, a thing you guys have to do? Yes. 1000%. And, or and, still even. and reminding and reminding. Like, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Stop fucking talking while you're spotting them, you asshole. What are you looking at? Focus on the bar. Keep your hands underneath the bar. 
I'm trying not to distract the person, but I also don't want them to die while they're spotting. This is that. The crazy <laughs> thing is, it's like it's so funny. You take a video of with them and like what they're spotting, and then like, because you'll tell them like, keep your hands close. Like he's saying, keep your hands close to the bar. If it goes down, grab it, right? And they'll they'll be like, oh yeah, I was close. Because you're like, dude, your hands were like, you weren't even close <laughs> to the bar. He's like, but I I was ready. They're like, I'm ready, but I'm ready. I'm like, you have no that not. much time if that bar drops. Or they're dead. You ever seen spot, the, let it fall on your foot. <laughs> you ever seen the videos on how you're supposed to like professionally spot? Oh god, like, with yeah. your elbow underneath and yes. not your hands. Because I went through the like, whole CSCS bull crap for a long. Oh time. really? It does that? Please oh, yeah. enlighten us. You have well the the there's a part that you have to pass in the CSCS that's like a like a a position like it's uh what's it called the practical where you have to like show them that you know how to like spot things and 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 like lay out the dimensions of a weight room with this this amount of weight across and like can you spot what? this lift can you spot like yeah there's an optimal moment you have to weigh the dimensions of a weight room for what does that have to do with anything like the spacing like of the like spacing a and the, like how far the barbells right? so have, have yeah. yeah yeah if, what the fuck just say like it's part are of we the interior test. designers or are we strength coaches like, i'm confused if you're the strength coach of a school and you go to uh, like Nate for the di- like he's gonna be asking you to get that info before they actually bring all the equipment. Yeah, like, they you don't know think he knows that. I feel like they have there. a program that they just plug and play, dude. They got now. Have shit like I, that I went to Nate's when, it, when we had the Swiss. I went to Nate's and it, his was like on laying out weight rooms. He was like, "No, that's actually a big deal." It's a he's big like, deal. like, I've had people mess that up, and it's like, "Oh, you're not getting your money back on this, on this or that, or now you got to wait to get the replacement because like it could be the difference of." You just need to get this type of squat rack, still from the same company, just a different one, because one foot less in each rack actually allows you to squat versus literally no one has any space in between. Yeah, and with bro. kids, you know what that means. Oh, I'm just going to walk in between while this person's benching, this person squat, and then before you know it, blown out shoulder and feet have been taken away. Yep. And then someone loses their job. So yeah. I'm surprised they actually, in that, that you know, it's not as BS as a NASM, but they're just one level above that. But I'm surprised that's a whole section. That's actually pretty important. There, there's a whole so the practical application <laughs> of all that stuff, dude. You have to know the complete design and layout of a weight room, and like what they'll ask you a question like, if you were designing a weight room, blah 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 blah, what should the dimensions between the squat racks be? If this this and this is going on, and it's like this is why <laughs> I stopped studying for this test because like I can't take you people seriously. You're not even talking about training at this point. I'm over. That's amazing. Like you should just have a reference list for. They can just have a reference page. That's like, all it is. Is a way to memorize that off your head. I had a like <laughs> Adam, Adam Jeanette. He's been he passed his just because he was like I need to get my foot in the door because I possibly want to go into this route where you have to have it. And that's what I yeah. feel like all professional sports have become if you want to be a strength coach and definitely at the collegiate level where you go grind out a graduate position or an assistant job for seven to yep. 10 years. And then hopefully they pick you to be the strength coach in, in waiting. And I just feel like that's a terrible career path because you're going to get paid. Nothing. You're going to work terrible hours. Well, that's I mean, how they do it. So they don't have to pay you. Cause it's like, Hey, you have no experience. You're a GA, exactly. which, is, which is why it's like, it's crazy that those kids will get the job over someone like me. That's been actually training people for three or four years, actually as certs that actually train teach you. But it's like if they had the exercise science with CSCS, they're like, we're going to hire them knowing we can pay them nothing or little to nothing. And then we know who they are. And hopefully if they become good enough, then we'll actually give them 30000 a year. Yeah. Well, I, get that, <laughs> I get that question a lot because I have a few kids that want to go to this route. And they're like, well, like, how do you know if you should get into the private sector as opposed to the collegiate sector? And I'm like, well, for me, it's no, no option, like no question. Okay, like I, I got into this game late. I'm not willing to go be a graduate assistant at this point. I'm like 30 years old in my life and like grind away another seven to eight years and live in a dorm or whatever I have to do to try to get a job that's decent later on. But um, he, I don't know. I tell him like, you got to make that decision for yourself. Like if you want to go into the private sector, go into the private sector. It's a little bit more rewarding and fulfilling, I feel like. But there's some people that have made a career out of the collegiate setting or at the professional setting doing strength and conditioning work that are pretty satisfied and happy. So it's pretty individualized at that or individual based at that point. I ain't doing it. I'm not going there. Nope. No, thank you. I can't listen to anyone else. Tell me what to do. Yeah. I feel like you would have a trouble not being your thank own you. boss. Oh, it was rough. <laughs> really rough. 
Will, you can't see that, right? Alex not being as much as No. <laughs> oh, man. I can't even be in a relationship, let alone fucking <laughs> listen to someone else who's not giving me something reciprocal. That's fair. Doesn't work that way. Yeah. Will, did you have any desire to go into the college scene? Or did you just knew, like, nah, I'm going to do my own thing? Well, I, always, I wanted to do the private because I mean my goal is to own my own gym one day so it's not like I was going to learn that from most college sector people right. um, like I still like it's not that I wouldn't do it in the future and you know I've applied to places and then some of them are like uh, we went with a guy that we had for like 10 years you know and you don't like some of them it's like oh you know the CSC has been just hilarious um, or some of them be like, just because just because you don't have the degree in uh, either exercise science or kinesiology crap. Um, but you know, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Like I have, I know some people that the person that was above them, if they were like the director, was either a conjugate guy, triphasic, you know, which is at least close, or just was a a pretty a guy that was like kind of hands off, like hey. You're in charge of these teams. Train them how you fucking want. I don't care. You know, so, like, I would do it as long as it's like that. Like, yeah. don't make me do Olympic lifts. And <laughs> as long as I'm the guy, as long as I'm the guy that runs whatever said team is, I'm pretty cool with that. You know, like, I could never do – I could never be like – they could be like, you know, you'll, you'll be a GA or something like that. Like, I could never do that. Yeah. Um, as long as I'm at least in charge of the people who I actually train – I'm cool with having a boss as long as that boss is not telling me like, Hey, I think you should do this when it comes to programming or how you train them. Like, no, but I know some people that have taken jobs that were in the private sector. That's that at least for a time being took a college job and it's like, Oh, well the person said they're going to be hands off, you know, and as long as you like, you know, like, like depth is like, he has one of the best situations, especially in high school because high school, I think they're probably even more controlled than even college. Um, oh, so a thousand you know, percent they are. You know, so he 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 basically does what he wants. Now, not every coach in sport, which is crazy, though he's been working there for twenty years, listens to them and brings their team in. But the ones that do, you know, have won state titles so, and have gone to nationals. The ones that don't are pretty trash. Yeah, so people are still gonna do and you know do what they think is right, even though they shouldn't even have a fucking opinion. But yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I shouldn't have an opinion. No opinions. Why for shouldn't me. you have an opinion? No opinions for me. Oh, people don't even know I exist in this town still. So my opinions are still concluded to the confines of my building, which is fantastic. Because I don't want any. I just don't care. You have people that don't know exist. You exist in a three thousand person town. Yeah, brother. They don't get outside of their homes, or they don't. That's interesting. It's like, what's the number one form of advertisement in my town still? It's the newspaper, as well as Facebook. The newspaper. You guys still have uh, a newspaper. Yeah, yeah dude. We have nice. not only the uh, newspaper, we have something called the advertiser. So if you'd really like to advertise, you can put yourself in the really? advertiser. Really? Yeah, who's reading it? Just like the old ladies in the town? <laughs> dude, dude the, the advertiser's shit. free and everybody gets it. Now, they're not going <laughs> to... What they charge you to put an ad in the advertiser is not so fun, but uh, everyone gets the... Did you try that already? I'm uh, working on it right now. Didn't know it. I literally had a lady tell me about it the other day, and I was like, yep, think I'm going to do that. <laughs> like, there's a thing I can advertise in? The advertisement's stupid, though. It's like $200 for like something that's like a, a business card. It's a good racket. Huh? Good racket. Yeah, there's freaking Reiki over there. They're not good with me. Newspaper, small town? Um, Cleo, how'd you start doing a seminar? You said what? How did you start doing your seminar? Um, how did I start doing my seminar? Well, them from the podcast because that's basically how I got everybody that I've had speak at the seminars. Um, do that, and I just came up with the idea because I was like, well, I don't see anybody covering the conjugate system like purely as there's like, for example, like the Swiss has a lot of people that use conjugate that speak. They have a lot of people that do block. That speak. They have a lot of people that do uh, linear that speak, um, you know, and, and train people. And then obviously they have a lot of people that are just like kind of like on the medical side. But I didn't see a lot of just strength coaches that are manipulating the current or conjugate system. So I was like, well, 
let me see if I can get people to speak. And by the vein. So the rest is history. People people keep agreeing to do it. And, uh, you know, hopefully it just keeps growing. And hopefully, like, six to, six to ten years from now, it's, one of, it's like one of the higher ones that are very competitive with, like, the ones like the Swiss. And um, I want to say probably the CPPS and even FRC that have, like, a really good following. Because I think mine could be very different. Um, I know Westside just started doing theirs, but <laughs> I think people may not love doing theirs because Louis just not there. I think a lot of people are not going to get over the Louis element not being there. So why would I listen to people that I don't even know who the hell they are? You know, like if you're not in our community, like really in it, you don't even know who Jason is. And you think Tom is still just the guy that hosts the podcast. So. <laughs> I, uh, you know, hopefully I can make mine, especially because mine is, I'm never going to try to limit it to one location forever. Mine will always, hopefully as it gets bigger, I can do them more often and in different locations, you know, so then people, because, you know, just like any good seminar, I think the best are the ones that they happen decently often and they're not always in one location because there's always going to be people that are, are going to be like, well, I'm never going to travel over there, you know, for whatever the reason is, so. You know, hopefully I can, uh, you know, same thing with like the podcast. I just felt a need that needed to be filled. And I said, well, I can do it. You know? It seems like the conjugate coach community is very hush hush about what they do. It's not talked yeah. about very often. So like you giving them a platform to actually speak about and not only making like, here's an opportunity to speak. Like, I feel like most of the time you just strong arm them into doing it. It's like, Hey, you're doing this, buddy. Sorry about it. Yeah, like you. Yeah, like I'm gonna do it next year because you strong armed me into talking about it. So yeah, yeah. How like often it. is it, Cleo? How often is the seminar? Once a once a year. This one, I the, so this is going to be the fourth year. I'm doing it in the summer, so that's going to be June 17th. Usually, I've been doing it every December. Um, but I was like, let's see if we can do one in the summer. See how it goes. So. Um, I don't know if I'll still do one this December or I'll wait till the next summer. Basically, like, I'll see, like, you know, where I'm at, like, working, if I'm still just doing the independent stuff, or I may be doing, like, a, a job that I may have to be more full-time, full-time. It may not allow me to travel outside of the travel that I do for work, so um, I'll see. But for now, I have this one this summer, and if I don't do one next week, I mean, this coming December, then I'll be doing it again next summer. So at least try once a year. But as I said, as it grows, I'm going to be trying to do hopefully maybe two to two or more a year. You know, so maybe like one east, one west, one something in the mid mid. What's that shit called? Midwest. You can, yeah, you can use my gym. You can use my gym to host it. I'm right in the middle, baby. I'm right in the middle. Where are you at again? Missouri. Come right okay. smack dab in the middle. So there you go. In the middle of nothing. Y'all are gonna be culture shocked when you show up to my gym. Uh, I know Where what's going this... on in the middle of Missouri. Nothing. Yeah. This place that I'll take you to the McDonald's afterward. The classy. Gym. Hey, there we go. <laughs> you ever make him a gangbang? Oh, of McDonald's. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's the only way to. You know. You know, there's some people that don't know what that is. It's unfortunate. I don't know what the, oh. what the hell gangbang like as a restaurant. Or you make a gangbang, bro. Help you go to McDonald's man. and you go through the value menu. Right, mm -hmm. and you get a McDouble, okay, and then you get a McChicken, mm -hmm. and you proceed to put the McChicken inside the McDouble, and voila, there's your McGangbang. Done. Is it good? Oh, it's delicious. I mean, mm -hmm. is McDonald's ever good? <laughs> yes. Only if the fries are fresh. Only if the fries are fresh. The he fries says. are not fresh. I don't know. Okay. Who's awesome. got the best French fries? McDonald's. No. McDonald's? No. You think? Who's got better fries than McDonald's? I like Wendy's fries. Big Wendy's fan. Wendy's, Wendy's fries. Yes, oh. Bro. Are you are you yes. dipping Wendy's fries in a frosty? Boy, duh. Yep. Okay. See, that's that's because you're that guy. See, I my fries Who isn't that are guy? good on their own. You're not no, that no, no, guy? No. They're not good. Not that's that why guy. you gotta dunk them in the frosty. This McDonald's guy. fries are good because you eat them he, by themselves. What? You talking about some fresh, crisp, golden McDonald's fries? I would dip those in a frosty. I don't think I've ever had one of those. 
I mean, yeah, see, see, that, but I like, I said, like only if they're hot. If they're limp not, and soggy. Yeah, see, don't. Yeah, those right. Are, well, maybe it's because you got that McDonald's in your town. Well, yeah, exactly. They don't no. send a good franchise one to your town. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Burger King got uh, the best burgers, though. Did did you try the sandwich from Raisin Cane's? Yeah, that phenomenal. I told you to make Nathan. Absolutely phenomenal. Speaking of fries, Leo, do you go to Raisin? Do you have a Raisin Cane's? Is that the a thing in not good. Georgia? Cane's is the one that actually has the chicken as the symbol. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, they don't go out this far. I think they're stuck Midwest and, and that's West. unfortunate. So they give you this, Orleans and I didn't go, and I think that was a mistake. They that's give you this Texas toast, right? And if you cut the Texas toast in half, you can stuff mm-hmm. the chicken fingers in the toast. And then mm-hmm. put some fries in there and yeah. drizzle this drizzle cane it. sauce over it, and you have like a a slider. This man opened my like eyes a, today. Like a chicken tender slider. Damn, bro, I gotta eat. That's making me hungry. I will say <laughs> it didn't. It it was not easy to like keep it all into one thing to try to eat it, but, but it, it was worth out. it, wasn't it? Yeah, it worked out. It worked out. No. Gosh, no canes, Khalil. Now you talk about being deprived. I mean, I'm I'm pretty good in Atlanta. We got pretty good food. <laughs> What's the best fast food spot though? Because Nathan loves like uh, gas station food. Oh, uh, oh god! See, he's making right? his, yeah. His opinion may not be valid on this. Uh, what a <laughs> gas great, <station> food. <laughs> a great gas station my corn dog butt? will just absolutely yeah, make my day. Like corn dog. Oh it my is lord! Corn dog, nice. Thick shit. Oh no! No. Dog. No, these are just Some already crackhead from Quick Trip. Put that shit on there. So if I like, oh, if, no. <laughs> if I go and see like a Loves, like those Loves gas stations, they're just absolutely huge because basically people live at them. All these truck drivers live there. So yeah. ev- everything is like, it's a quality <laughs> place, man. Like they're doing. Oh right. man, should have taken you to Johnson's Corner while you're out here. You could have had a crazy cinnamon roll. Yeah, now I'm disappointed. That this yeah, I stick happen. to shit that's wrapped and in the aisle if I'm going to a gas station. Come on, man. Venture <laughs> out. Or no, like the, you gotta hit up the truck stops out. that have the restaurants attached. And you gotta go to the nest as the heifer. No, I'm good. <laughs> you haven't been in a good loves then, man. They keep a tight shift. I'm no, I, I think you. I've been I think I've been to the one of those, yeah. Tight shift. Right. Everything's clean. Those truckers, man. <laughs> Living the high life. Got the massage chairs on the side. <laughs> yeah. Probably have the showers. Oh, they have everything. You could live in a loves. I'm, I get lost in there. My wife's like, "Hey, we gotta go." There's, there's, there's You're like, but look at all this great there. food. You're like the person if you had a gas station down the street, you would just spend all your money going to the gas station. It's the not time. even the food either. It's just the amount of stuff that they offer you in there. It's like, holy god, they have this at That's a gas buys station. Clothes. Yeah. Nathan comes out with a new wardrobe every time. Three dollar t shirt, baby. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it says the place in Arkansas you're visiting. Yeah. Well, I think it just stems back from being like travel baseball all the time. We were just traveling all the time. Mm. So we were just in gas stations twenty four seven. Sounds awful. It's not child abuse. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great. Best times of my life. I love travel baseball. It actually was a blast. That. Yeah. Gas station food, fueling the machine. Bro, when you're playing five games a day, it's just pick and grab and go, baby. Yeah, well, well, how much better do you think people would do if they actually ate well instead of just whatever? Oh, I'm uh, like tenfold probably, but we didn't have a clue. Like, almost like if you look at old pictures of people, like on a beach back in the '70s, everyone was fit. Hmm. <laughs> Because well, we're eating know, better back then. I know. What is what is the generation that's like 2000 and like, well, just after millennial? What is that? Gen X or something? Z? Whatever yeah. they want. First, first no generation idea. where obesity went back up instead of going down. Oh. Oof. And look at social media. They're born with it. iPad, <laughs> phone. They started like three years old now. And right. PE recess just basically doesn't exist in schools. Lunch is, lunch is now 25 minutes. Bro, as you remember... Lunch is 25 lunch was, minutes? The first 15 minutes was getting your food. Yeah. 25 yeah. minutes, bro? And then Hopefully they you're not getting a fight in line. Classroom. They're not feeding they start, you anything in those lunches. Yeah. And they start SAT prep in like 6th grade now. Like, so. Man, I remember like school lunch as a kid. It was not high quality, that's for sure. It's way My worse now. It's pretty good. My yeah, it's pretty worse good. now? Oh. They were I like, thought... Subs eat free. Like I was like, oh, I'm a substitute teacher. I could eat free when I was doing that thing or whatever. 
I go mm-hmm. clubbing for a while. I wouldn't touch any of that stuff. <laughs> I thought hey, you like Michelle what Obama went through the schools and made them all healthy. What no, happened to that? She tortured it. She torched it. She she put it to the stake. Like it's not good, man. Oh. They don't. It's not that it's not healthy. It's they don't give them enough. Like I. Yeah, they like, don't. I, everything is so many of the kids is all about like. Oh. Kind of, Andy told me about this because she does so much with nutrition, and she told me that there's a new eating disorder, and it's basically where all. You only thing you eat is health. What's supposedly healthy? Ugh. So then you're under eating because, like, you know how many kids oh, will say Jesus. McDonald's, Taco Bell. I would never. It's so unhealthy. I'm like, yeah, and you got no neck, and it looks like it. You're trying to play fucking sports. <laughs> you got yeah, no neck. Yeah, guess what that man Shannon Sharp ate? Whatever mama put on the plate. Most of that shit was fried fucking chicken, spam sandwiches, and the motherfucker was yoked up to his neck. And your <laughs> seafood diet, seafood and eat it. 130. Well, yeah, yeah. Ray, I don't Ray know why you can't gain weight, coach. Because you ain't eating, motherfucker. That's why. <laughs> hey, man, you know how hard it is to bulk? You know what's the, the hack to bulking? Fucking rice noodles. Yeah, I didn't. I answered your poll. How many How many car, How many many grams of carbs are in those puppies? So check this out. A four-ounce serving is going to yield about 50 grams of carbs. So that means an eight-ounce serving fuck? is 100 grams. Wow. So I could eat just three of those a day, and I'm almost, I'm there. Right. You just got to get your protein higher. Like, I was just crushing them, not thinking about it. I'm like, this is cool. And then I'm like, how did I just stay near 220 so much? And then I, like, started weighing out the rice noodles, and I went, oh, fuck. Now I get it. <laughs> like, there's twice as many carbs per Damn. ounce. I didn't realize that. Rice. Yeah. I thought rice was, like, the best option. So, if you want a cheat sheet, bulking rice noodles. If you want to maintain, just stick with the rice. If you want to lose weight, eat some potatoes. Potatoes go the other way. Yeah. Eight ounces of potatoes is like 25 grams of carbs. Like what? Yeah, but still people are not understanding how under, like. They're terrified of potatoes too. Well. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, you know, a whole civilization lived on them. Like an entire group of people ate nothing but potatoes and they did just fuck. the Irish motherfuckers or something? Yeah. Yeah. And, they, and then they uh, ruined their economy and destroyed their soil and had to move here. But sure, no, we'll talk about that. Right. But there is a lot of nutrients in potatoes. But what? What's the what, like? Carbs. The perception of like I'm I can't eat too much to lose weight seems to not yield actual good results for people. Like people are just severely undernutrition, like undernourished, in, in my opinion. Like it seems like no one eats well, enough, yeah, at all. And then That's when the you ask them to eat. Problem. Yeah, like just eat like a regular amount. That just seems like an excruciatingly amount. Of so much food. How can you do that? But it's yeah, not. Some of these people are not even at their maintenance level Most and they're trying to gain weight. And then a lot of people, like so many of the fad diets, especially like girls will do, it's like 1,200 to max maybe 1,500 calories. My girlfriend has abs and she, I think she eats like 2,300 a day. Right. Like so, so many people, it's like they're just not eating. Well, some people, it's like I don't eat fat or I don't eat carbs. Or you have the people that don't eat meat. And so many of them just like, bro, you just got to eat the right amount of all of it. Yeah. And just try to eat less processed shit. And that's it. And then consistently do that and work out consistently. You do that, you're going to drop that body fat way down. Like if, Now, if you want to get below 10 as a guy, below like no. 16 as a girl, okay, you got to go. You got to be a little bit even more diligent. But so many people are so far away from those just kind of basic things. Like they don't even know how to like eat smart let alone like when we talk about actually tracking shit where it's like yeah you're, you're just you eat 1200 calories bro that's that's uh, i fucking do that at dunkin donuts in the morning i'm already i just started you're but that's your whole day what did you eat it's you it's know a, it's alarming what kids will come in and tell you that oh, they and then the after, the day. oh my god it's so five bad. hours no eating what the fuck and then they're like i don't have any energy to train i'm like no kidding you think <laughs> like you ate a donut today congratulations go home like i yeah it sucks Don't too, turn like, any you have, No, they're you not. Have, uh, like girls or stuff that want to lose weight. Like they, they, you know, they want to lose weight. They're young and they're they're athletes and they're a little bit on the bigger side. And it's like, but because they're around the freaking, you know, Adderall, fucking some of them coked up friends of theirs that are like rail thin and they don't play sports. They just do the same shit, you know, without the drug, hopefully. And it's like that's why you're just getting more and more skinny fat essentially you're depleting yourself even more and you're an athlete so your requirements are way higher Higher. than your just regular friend you know so you're you're eating a diet of like avocado toast that's my favorite thing in the morning that they like to say they eat 
and it's like, and then they go Basically five hours and have lunch. Yeah. Then they have lunch and it's like a slice of pizza, baby. Yeah. And then they go to practice. They haven't eaten for four hours. Then they come to me after practice. They haven't had a snack. And then they go home. And depending on the parent who's cooking, the dinner's decent. So they've had one out of their four to five meals they should eat good. Three meals skipped. And one thing that was basically just carbs. Yeah, and they're, and they're, they're like maybe at 1,500 calories. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> And you're like, you wonder why you're tired all the time. Why you can't get to school. And, and then muscles you're... are inflamed and joints are not healthy and they're not recovering from workouts. And I basically just got to do body tempering sessions with them because they're just destroyed. It's like, well, you're, you're, and then you're not sleeping. Then they don't sleep because school is so crazy. So, well, and if you don't have the food, you won't <laughs> yeah, sleep either. I mean, the crazy thing I had a client one time tell me like, I ate more protein and I slept better. I'm like, no. oh, your body didn't wake you up because it needed more nutrients. A novel idea. They're like, oh, that's how it works. I'm like, what? Yeah. What do you think we're doing here? Just a machine <laughs> trying to get more fuel. <clears throat> yep. Convincing people to eat more to lose weight is always a fun one as well. So, all three of you people that are listening to this podcast, <laughs> eat more fucking food. Eat it all, baby. Eat it all. I had. I have a client that finally. She's awesome. She's been with me for a year. She bought into the macros. She did the thing. She wanted to lose 20 pounds. She lost 20 pounds. And she was like, I'm full all the time and I'm losing weight. What is going on? And I'm like, that's what it's about right there. That's pretty cool. I'm like, I, I told you it would work. Like, you don't have to believe me. Just do it. And by far work. the hardest thing to coach, though. Like, oh, nutrition coaching is by far, by far. The, <laughs> the most, like, unforgiving and thankless part of the job sometimes like it's the one that is, people always want though well everybody wants it but nobody yeah. really wants it like everybody wants it for 12 weeks yeah. or everybody wants it for you know a short while but like nobody wants it forever <laughs> like, nobody wants to eat fucking chicken and rice every day i get so many people that want to do this want to do that and then i tell them what they can eat I'm like, have as much of it as you want. And they're like, uh, what about something else? I'm like, what do you mean? So are we eating for performance or what are we doing here? Like, because you got to flip a switch and it's no longer a mouth pleasure. It's like, hey, this is going to make me actually do this task better. So I don't know. I made a doctor mad the other day when I told him veggies don't matter. Screw him. <sighs> I mean, fiber. I'm... That's it. It's like, they were like, no, you need your veggies. I'm like, Okay. Like, prove it to me. I've not <laughs> eaten them in like a decade and I'm fine. Like like I said, those potatoes, they got a lot of shit in them. Like meat has a lot of stuff in it. Rice also has stuff in it. It's crazy. If yeah, you go down the carnivore. You're taking your supplement, like so many of the stuff that you're getting for vegetables, you'd have to eat so much of it to get the same that you can get in most oh, of the take yeah. a few vitamins and it's like and then if you're eating good, healthy uh red meat, I mean it's like you don't the argument, I think there's probably a better argument probably for fruit than maybe vegetables, but yeah, maybe even still, that. even still, it's like, I, it's definitely not as necessary, I think, as the other stuff. It's not like, as I, necessary. I think it's more as, of a bonus. It's not as so, necessary as people make it out to be. Like, yeah, you, yeah, they, exactly. They yeah, always exactly. revert yeah. back to, like, the food pyramid or the my plate. Oh, thing. gosh. And I'm like, <laughs> you guys deal with people God. that revert to that? Oh, my Lord. Well, they just, that's Did what they were the raised on. One? I saw the updated one, and it was, it was by Harvard, and it, Oh no! One part of it, I can't remember what it was. It pissed me off. I said, "Oh, you updated this? That's really good. That's really good." What the fuck? <laughs> it, it, I think it may, it may have been. Where it said Lucky Charms are healthier like, than like eggs was, and meat. No, I think it was still like they had chicken and like fish, like very like wherever it was of importance high, but it was like red meat was in the category of oh, it should be not very often. I'm like. Damn it, you're still behind, bro. You're still all them doctors in there, and y'all still don't know more than whatever the top oh. bodybuilding specialist nutritionist. They're just out it's of whoever's touch. paying them. Yeah, that's all. You gotta follow the you money trail. Yeah, somebody. Yeah, yep, yeah, because yeah, they got that too. But I mean, just like most doctors, how many of them know about actually having human body works? No, they know how to repair it. Well, 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 ho, ho. They know how to surgically. They, they know how to like treat it and like band aid it. They don't want they you to actually you. be cured. No, and they lose out of money. Back. Yeah. I keep telling my clients that I'm like, 
well, they're like, I feel better for a little bit, then I don't feel better. I'm like, yeah, that's what they do. They're, it's just they're giving you band aid solutions. <laughs> I think it's designed that way. <laughs> so they keep coming back so they can give you another shot or another band aid solution. That's what they get taught in school, yeah. I'm like they're not they're they're a reactive system. They just react to the things that you tell them. They're not preventative. They're not proactive. I'm gonna try to be proactive and preventative, just so where you don't have to go see those people. That's the goal here. We're all gonna have words to... he's dropping, folks. Proactive and preventative. Preach. Well, I used them right, right? I don't think. Yeah, no, that was great. Well done, buddy. Yeah, I mean, those imagine, were good. <laughs> imagine if they pushed for exercise and eating healthy oh, as God. the real reason why. Like, like it was saying they were COVID. No one wants to say COVID is impacting the black community at a higher rate. Hmm. Black people don't usually have the same access as other races to gyms, healthier diets. They have a higher level of obesity. So when you have a higher level of obesity, you're more susceptible to disease and infection. That's why people die of the fucking flu. There's no skinny people who are dying from that. It's obese people. But if we tell people to get in shape and eat right, we're the bad people. Well, our hospitals won't be filled as much because fifty percent of our deaths are because people are fat. Well, no, or we're just the villain because we've be- we've become a culture of people that can't handle when people say, "Hey, like you're." Yeah, doctors can't tell you that you're fat anymore. No, okay. <laughs> that's great. That's definitely not allowed. <laughs> you're gonna get canceled. They're Man, legally not allowed to say that. <laughs> they're wait. They're legally Crazy not. Said. You're kidding me. Yeah, they're legally not allowed to tell is people it, they're is fat. It, they is literally it a state cannot. State decision or is it federal law? That's a well, federal from the law. the doctors that I know here in Colorado, they are oh. legally not allowed to tell people that they are fat. Can you just call them a beast? They need to lose weight. No, you can't do any of that. You're kidding me. No, because you can sue. Well, you can sue me, man. Get off your everything. Butt, I mean, go. I'll tell anybody like, "Hey, you got a fucking problem. You need to shut up, stop shoving shit down your face." Like, <laughs> <laughs> you signed this waiver. Sorry about you. Well, like, how is it? Like, I was almost the weight that I am now with none of the muscle tissue that I have now at like 18 years old, and I went, "Hey, this is a problem." Like. That doesn't occur to other people, or do they because, not care? Like, no, because society has told them that it doesn't matter what shape, what size, what this, what that, whatever you are, you're no, still beautiful. stop making noise. You're oh. still wonderful. It, like it's the Lizzo thing, right? Like everyone tells Lizzo, I don't know oh, God. how wonderful Liz- I, Lizzo is and how beautiful. I'm, I'm walking around in a meat vehicle, and I can tell you that the better the meat vehicle is running, the better the experience has become. No, because it's it's no. It's not allowed you know. anymore. No, that's just no. I'm telling you what people will tell you. That's not true. That's, you can't tell well, me not, my reality, buddy. I'm not telling you your reality. I'm telling you from my experience. Yeah, they don't care about your experience. They only care when about my, what they think. When my meat vehicle is functioning at a higher level, the experience is more fun. I agree. But you can't tell people that. <laughs> I don't get injured when I go to do random things like most people do. Like, I can play sports still. Yeah. Like, that's a crazy thing, right? Like, you know, most people are like, oh, you know, I still feel like I'm 18 and try to, and like, no, most of the things I do, I do better than I did when I was 18. I would agree At this point in time. I I say that all the time. I'm like, man, if I would have known what I was doing at 18 to 22 during my collegiate time, I'm like, what kind of athlete would I have been? So, Like, maybe the jumping has fallen off a little, possibly. I also don't train it that well. How do you feel, Khalil? Do you think you perform better now than you did when you were younger? I could be one on one, sixteen year old me. Everything after that until I retire. No, I'm forty pounds bigger than I was, so I'm much slower. Jumping okay, so is in that sport. Jumping no, is only powerlifting. Like jumping is like three to four inches less, and that's only because I don't do jumps. If I probably did jumps, and I'm like, I'm gonna start because now that I'm done with treatments, I'm gonna start going back to uh, my oh, men's shit. league. Once or twice a week, probably just once a week, just to get my cardio in and basically do all those plows and not have to do it in the gym and spend more time in the gym. Like, I don't want, like, I remember before I started working with Swede, I did jumps one day after squats and my IT bands were in flame for like three days. I said, no, fuck this shit. I can't do like fresh right after. I can't do that, especially at my weight. Like, I'm just, I'm 40 pounds essentially over my playing weight was. And if I wanted, if I wanted to be 
compared to where I was, I would have to be that much lighter. Like, I'm just too big for my size. Me and Giannis way the same. I jump way better now. Like, so that's way, a, way, Giannis way the same. That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Seven feet tall. That guy needs to put some fucking meat on him. Like, maybe no, that did. No, no, no. He no, did, no, though. He, you don't remember? You never seen him when he. Yeah. I know. I he remember 19 year old Giannis. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah, I know, but like <laughs> at seven feet tall, don't you think he should be at least like 275? Oh, no, my Lord, not no. because his style of game is not like Joel and B. Or Shaq. He, he, LeBron's he, 280, like is he not? not? No, no, no. The heaviest LeBron's been is only 260. Yeah, he's not. Only and 260. He's, yeah, now he's. He's like he's five inches something. shorter. What? No, he's only two inches shorter. LeBron's than like six nine. Giannis is not. Giannis is not seven feet. Giannis is only six ten to six eleven. He's only he's only an inch and a half shorter than inch and a half to two. Oh, inches at six eleven, I'm giving you seven feet. Well, like, his sorry. wingspan is huge. Like his wingspan yeah. is huge. He's a but he, like you gotta think like he's naturally like LeBron was always naturally a little bit more muscular than Giannis is. So like the amount of muscle Giannis has had to put on to get to his current size, he'd have to mm. fight hard to get to two sixty two seventy, and it's like. He's two forty something, and he's the best player in basketball. What was his injury awesome that took him out of the playoffs? What happened there? I don't remember. Fell on his tailbone. Fell on his tailbone. Yeah, he and he was like did more deadlifts have a bigger booty? A perfect, like right on that shit. That shit was terrible. Oof. But he didn't keep. He only he only missed. Uh, what was it? One game, I think. Two? No, it was two and a half because he left halfway through the first, and then he missed game two and. The season was just a failure two, they, after that. Game two, they oh, won. Stop. So they were like, just stir the populace. It's, that was a I great said, interview, though. That, great interview. Now, I, I like what he said. I, I, about I can't argue with him. And being failures, but in if you're getting paid to play basketball and you have I mean, a legitimate chance to win a championship and you lose to the HC but they, the way they did and you beat you get beat four one. Well, you're not a failure, but the season was a failure. Like correct. Those two, they're but but. He should have, which I would have liked if he would have said that part too. Because he should be saying, yeah, I'm not going to be thinking of slipping my wrist just because I fucking lost a basketball. At the end of the day, I'm going to pay $250 million contract to dribble his fucking ball. But, there, like, I remember Shannon, I think, was talking about it. There's people in that organization that may lose or get a promotion based on how that season goes. That's a yeah. fact. Yeah. So, yeah, it fucking matters. You don't think they were like, there's people that are sweat Like Mike Budenholzer. He like it's sad. He lost his brother, they found out, in a car accident midway through that series. Now maybe that's why his adjustments were zero. But someone is probably getting fired or replaced because they lost four one. Because guess who's guess who they're not gonna fire? Giannis on the Kupo. Well, who they gonna look at? Middleton. He still only averages sixteen points. He keeps getting hurt. And he's getting and his name, him no. and Middleton. Come on. <laughs> Exactly. He's a middle but of the pack guy, you know. But Giannis, all, like you him. said, Giannis also only he sat out two and a half games. You're talking about the best yeah. player in the league sitting out two and a half games, where obviously if he plays in those games, it makes a big difference. Hey but, guys, allegedly the best player in the league is also out right now, so I'm calling nonsense on that. Also, wait, Joel, stir the Ooh. pot there. Yeah, he's he's been out, hasn't he? Ooh. He's not the best player in the league. Who? Allegedly Joel is Embiid. Oh, um, I think he was the MVP, but I don't think he's the best player. He's also been yeah, hurt every allegedly. year of his career. Now, now I'll say this. Let's say Joel Embiid beats the Celtics, goes on. He's going to beat the next team because the next team is either going to be Miami or the Knicks. Now, if he, if he were to lose that, he's going to be way back down. But let's say he, he gets to the finals and then he beats the Nuggets – the Warriors or the Lakers, which are all teams that maybe on paper, I would say, except for the Warriors, are probably better overall team. And he beats them, and he knocks he knocks out the guy that he's always competing with for MVP and Jokic, or he knocks out LeBron and AD, or he ends, which I think this is the last year for that Warriors dynasty, and he wins the ring. I, I it's just like Shaq said, you won. All right, you have I have no problem with you saying you're the best player, but. Yeah, Joel Embiid and James Harden on the same team who have both flamed out of playoffs bad? No, hell no. You're going to, you get like, yeah, great. You finally won your MVP. Prove mm. it. Prove it. Uh, you yeah. know, now let, let me see how much, the, let me let me see those 40 points and 12, re, uh, 12 free throws a game. Let me see if you do that in the playoffs this year. Yeah. Like, 
Now, if he loses and but he did great and James Harden does the shit that he usually does and just does terrible, okay, I won't blame him. But hey, I, James, but then I won't, you know, I won't jump. James him carried him game one without Embiid. He wins. I mean, he, he was, did Houston James and he made that shot. I was happy for him. Couldn't miss, I was like, man. oh god, he's gonna miss that shit, and he made it. He clutch. <laughs> Well, boys, going on an hour fifteen here. Anything, anything else you'd like to discuss? And I like stirring the pot. It's kind of fun. Bring to light. Well, we stirred enough of that pot today. Look out! We, we took uh, a shot at Lizzo today. I mean, I didn't take any shots at anything. FBI is going to be knocking on our door tomorrow. You remember they Just, got mad at? You remember the fat people got mad at Adele because she lost weight? Yeah. Said, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Uh, isn't that amazing? Like, hey, screw you. <laughs> You you help screw yourself. you for looking good. You bettered she yourself. Good, yeah. Good, yeah. good for Adele. Like, hey. But we she don't was like, always, she was always no. a good girl in the face, but I was like, yeah, I ain't, I ain't messing with that. She's like 400. Now she looked good. I said, man. <laughs> well, yeah, but we don't we don't condone that kind of behavior anymore. We don't like praise that kind of behavior anymore. It's like, oh, you're just one of them. You're one of them people. You're a fat shamer. How dare like, you? Did you uh I saw a thing on Twitter. Budweiser lost, you know, 26% of their sales. Oh yeah, and then, campaign. Yeah. yeah, and then there was a magazine that was LGBTQ whatever friendly that was mad for not sticking up for that person, and so it's like now you're getting it on both ends, Anheuser Busch. Like you yeah. lost sales, and now the people you're sticking up for fucking hate you too. Yeah, well done, Good job. Buddy. Well like, done. Just mm, well, that's what the saying: go woke, go broke. Right? Like, it's just so crazy because it's like like with the Nike <laughs> Nike sponsored that same trans woman for it uh, stuff, but put it under the women's section. I'm like, just make their own. It's so crazy that it's offensive to say there's a difference between a trans woman and a, and a woman. And it's offensive for you to say, Khalil, because you're, you're black. You get to say it, right? No, no, they still get mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still a big, <laughs> well, no, nobody can at, say it then. I guess they're mad at, they're mad at everybody. You know? Well, then you probably and, turn into a conservative right away. I bet. Yes, I think. do. Which is this immediately? It's, it's they just assume. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta fit into these labels. Like I, I'm from New York. I grew up around gay people, plenty of them. That's like the hub. I grew up like mm, everybody. Later, though. As the trans community came more to the forefront, I was around them too. I had no problem. With it. But when you start talking about destroying women's records in sports, and you start talking about enforcing on parents by the state making them say you're either going to lose your kid mm. or you're going to let them get this surgery and medically castrate them. Mm. Those two things are fucking retarded. Like, Hey, you can't say that a word, a bro. They're going to have a problem with me when my kid goes to school because I know was this. You, have you heard of this shit with the furries? Yeah. Yes. Let kids said no, thank animals goodness. And fucking walking them on leashes. And remember, in the beginning, they said it's never going to get that crazy. People aren't going to do crazy stuff. Yeah, They're yeah. not going to impose their rights and start hindering on everybody else's rights. Yeah, that's what happened. Cass- hey, Cassville- man, you got a whole generation that hasn't read 1984. They don't know. Yeah. Cassville actually had a- some kids that were trying to get that passed in the school board. was like, oh, no. Let's Dude, see. where you live, they went so backwards that they want to start spanking kids again. That's crazy. Don't bring this. That's not even the... It- that's Damn awesome. It. No, yeah, no, I think it's kids. great. Yeah, they're beating the kids in your state. Anyway. So what's funny yeah. about the whole situation? These kids need to get smacked, though. I'll tell you that. Well, here's the media at its finest, right? There's four schools in the area that do it. And of three of the four, Castle was the only one that took the policy away and then brought it back. So the other three just never got rid of it. Never did anything about right. it. They're just like, yeah, we're still beating kids. And so now... <laughs> Maybe you need a little bit of fear. I don't, I don't think it's so bad. Then nice. the parents don't have to do all of it. You know what well, I mean? that's, well, that's why the parents like, liked you it. You tell the teacher to go fuck himself. The teacher should be able to smack listen, you. Like, listen. Hey, little motherfucker, don't get this shit. You see, you see these kids, they be talking to some like, like it's the football coach who's also the science teacher. Talking shit to them. And they, you know, it's like, after a while, it's like, <laughs> the best lesson this kid can learn is like, don't fuck with somebody you can't fight. Like, right. you should learn that lesson. <laughs> but like, fuck out of here. They're, they're, they made it seem like it was like that's the first resort. They're just like, oh, you get in trouble, you're getting spanked. It's like, no, the parents have to sign off on it. 
It's the last resort. Like they're going to. You're, you're on the list. Like the teacher checks is like, oh yeah, yeah, you get your ass beat today. You need to stay after for three minutes. <laughs> like, oh, oh shit! Oh, you already did this. You did this. You did. Th- oh, there we go. <laughs> Do you guys ever watch Days and Confused? And yeah. they're fucking hazing the the high school kids by fucking backing the shit out of them with the mallets like teachers have their own custom ones with I've different names that. on them and shit no. you've never seen days of confused i don't think so maybe ben affleck's best movie ever but oh okay now i have to watch it okay yeah it's i like amazing. the Bruce brothers when they were beating them with the rulers and then they came back <laughs> as adults and then they beat them again <laughs> never told to get smacked sometimes that's i say something me and my mom smacks me I'm like yeah I deserve it. oh I mean, yeah <laughs> there's checks and balances there should be yeah. Well, I think parents, okay, I don't want to speak for everyone because I'm going to be a parent, but like parents in general want to be kids' friends now. They don't want to be their oh parent. Oh, my God, yeah. They don't want to be their parent. You don't want to discipline them? People instead of kids, they're little people. What the yeah. That shit, bro. Three year old well, yelling at his mom. That's the creepy store. thing is they are little people. So if you treat them like that and then they turn into big people, you see what we have craziness. Yeah. Absolute <laughs> lunacy. You know how many kids well, you don't can do whatever you want. Like, look at somebody in the face and no. say yes, sir, yes, man. That doesn't exist. Everybody's a winner. No, no, no. They're not. They started to break it to you. Year. They didn't want to give me the. And this was because I think it was because I was in New York. They're like, oh yeah, the like the rule is just all the seniors get an award, no individual trophies. I'm like, and everybody in this fucking district knows I'm the MVP, and I don't get no <laughs> award. I said I worked this hard. I should be getting something for it. Yeah. I said this guy's the 13th man. He's just a senior. I shouldn't be. Get the same fucking trophy as him. The hell is this? What yeah. was the what was the state that got rid of the valid Victorian and salutatorian thing? It's like we're not. Oh doing, my god! It's Are look it up. It's me? on Google. Yeah, they I only got rid of valid Victorian class anymore. All right, I'm good. Wow, that's oh, why would you just that's let's terrible. promote mediocrity even more? I'm gonna double down on this, and you know, no one wants to be mediocre. Like nobody wants that. I promise you. Some people have to deal with it, but nobody wants it. Whatever. I'm sure there's something he does all the time. Because he wants to be good at it, not because what you do. Let's see if I. Yeah, that's why it. people hate their jobs because they do them just to do them, not because they want to be good at them. Yeah. Life tip: You want to enjoy your work, go do something you like, and you'll want to get better at it, and then it won't feel like work as much. Pretty crazy. Oh, it's California! What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, I thought it was weird oh, when North I was Carolina, looking at school. North Carolina. Competition and hurts students. Is what it says. Competition, competition hurts students. Hurts. That's what it says. Oh, my God. Competition hurts the weak. It doesn't hurt students. Well, at least it's rid of the weak. find out, hey, I'm not good at this. Clearly. Yeah. Well, what that's do you do? Weak, I know okay. what you're good at. Well, yeah, but like, what do you do when you go to your first job and you're like, oh, we're all equal? It's like, no, you get paid no, on production no, here, buddy. Getting that you get promotion. paid on production. Well, they... they Go home and quit. That's what happens. Yep. Go to the next job. It's uh fascinating. Yeah. I don't know. I guess if there's no competition, then everything's got to be played fair. Then what's the point of waking up in the morning? I don't know. (laughs) I I don't know. I I tried that. I I tried to be in the corporate world. Tune in next time to see if we've solved this. They didn't like me there (laughs) because I would sleep and still do more work than most of the employees. I would get paid for sleeping they're like you shouldn't be sleeping on the job i'm like i'm doing as much as everyone else <laughs> like why do i get penalized with more work because i do it faster how does that make any sense that brings you back to the school action i used to get in trouble because i would finish first then be talking <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm like, dude you always get penalized in regular society for being awesome it's like hey here's some more stuff for you because you did well like hey, what here's, here's some more busy work for you to do go ahead uh, Sweet. Science, freshman year of science class I would have answers before the teacher figured them out she's like you sure you don't want to do honors I'm like no why would I want to do more work <laughs> like this gets me the same diploma that the I'm other good. class does what, like what I'm good right here <laughs> like, thanks lady just let me know if you need some answers I'll help you out analyze the good that's crazy reward man. the weak well, We're living in 1984. Well, gentlemen, I'm. Nathan's got to go. Production I team's got to take it. Take I, a hike. Well, no, production team has to go help a client. So. <laughs> Oops. All right. Well, it's been fun. It's been real. And 
I didn't get to see Khalil this whole time, so it was fun listening to you, Khalil. But oh, you didn't you see it frozen see on my end on the whole time. It's been frozen <laughs> upside down. <laughs> just so frozen upside down, Khalil, the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. So he's uh, just been. He's he's like the caller. Like caller, are you on the line? So I'll have, to, I'll have to maybe watch the YouTube version and see what's going down. Yeah, he'll be on that one. Trust me, he's been moving. I'll see him long. doing all the edits. Hey guys, in case you didn't know, I have uh, Twitter, Substack, YouTube, Instagram, everything. Deleting this. I have out. a news. I have a Gone. weekly newsletter. I got all kinds of shit. So if you need you need content, I got tons of it. Yeah, That's hey, my shameless plug. Uh, there's like, your shameless, follow, subscribe, all the above. Plug. Khalil, um, I'm gonna if, unless you want to shout him out, I'll link your. I'll put your socials in the description here and. Get some people to come check out these guys definitely. also have social medias too i don't know if you guys know but it is basically <laughs> my podcast so thanks yeah we're not really here we're just Jason, here Jason just does all the dirty work <laughs> we're just here to and support then Cleo Alex. Kills all the time with yeah exactly this is all just my vehicle to make us rich the support group Let's first one to get a yacht has to invite everyone else okay deal done manifesting that into the universe i'm not yachts. i would never buy boats and hoes yeah. Boats and hoes. Boats and hoes. <laughs> there there are no rules on the water, so no rules and no wives. I'll swing it. I'll see if I can swing that one. I don't know. No what happens on the no water wives. stays on the water. Nathan, where'd you go? Well, go Alex was having a time. Alex was having a seminar nowhere. on a yacht. So <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's awesome. That is such a good <laughs> idea. I, I need a fucking yacht as a business right, expense. We'll <laughs> we got conjugate <laughs> seminar yacht edition. Coming to you, 20, 2024. 2024. <laughs> Here we go. Well, we start in Miami, and who knows where we end up? But we're not going through that Bermuda Triangle. All right, Bert will still be like, well, since we're on a boat, we're, we're on the water. Now, if you have a swimmer and the tide is strong, you're going to form a <laughs> Yes. Yes. Get Bert on the yacht. Could you imagine Deppin on a yacht? Oh, oh man. Wow. That man would be drunk. Deppin on the yacht would be the best thing ever. Drunk? I think drunk would be the least of our worries if Deppin's on the yacht. Dude, <laughs> you you didn't come to the seminar because you're a jackass. Yeah, but pretty much. Deppin's awesome to go fucking hang out with. So Deppin on a yacht, that's that's a life goal. We got to get him on one. <laughs> like, that'd be great. Pick him up in the dirty jurors and just head down to Miami. That's the <laughs> seminar, right? It's a. Oh, we're going <laughs> down the coast now. The fuck? It's a yeah, we're going trip. down the yeah, coast, dude. We're going trip. from Atlantic City to Miami, and when we get back to Miami, we all got to fly back to Vegas. Jesus make... What are we? You selling? said you wanted in multiple locations, bro. I don't know what you're trying, what you're trying to do here, but you can knock them all off in one trip. Doing seminars? Like the fuck? Yeah, it's a seminar at each stop, and on the yacht. There's like squat racks on, like no. Just stop by. Hey, hey, you want to get on this yacht? We heard about the conjugate system. <laughs> hey, man, Liver King's got a squat rack on a fucking H1 Hummer. I think we can get one on a yacht. Okay. Well, we could just take the pieces and build one, for goodness sake. All right. Well, until next time, gentlemen. All right, boys. Signing off. Khalil, thanks for coming on, brother. Thanks, yeah, Khalil. It. It awesome. and even though Khalil's the reason we all had this podcast in the first place. So <laughs> true. Actually, very true. So. So, good first guest. Way to go, Khalil.